Hello, my name is Matt Radizak and I'm an application engineer with Prolum PLM. My primary focus is in XCAD, and today we're going to be doing something a bit different from our typical webinar. Today we're going to be doing a demonstration of NX routing and harness design to show the capabilities of some of its tools inside of NX. Also as a heads up, because this is a demonstration, it will be shorter than our typical webinars. A quick run through of the agenda for today. We're going to be going through how to qualify and place parts, how to create paths, how import component and connection lists work, how to create a form board, and then we'll go over design changes, such as if you've already created your harness, how you can modify it, and how you can update your form board accordingly with those changes. Now, as you can see here, we have a basic control box. And the first thing I want to do is I want to qualify one of my components. And what this allows us to do is it allows me to add routing specific intelligence to the part file. This information dictates how the part will function in my routing assembly, meaning how it's placed, how it relates to other parts, or how it behaves during routing operations. What this allows you to do is to take older parts, step files, or files you get from places like GrabCAD, and make them compatible with the next routing so that the benefits of routing come through when passing to those components. <clears throat> now for this model, I'm going to be specifying it as a device. And I want to create a new multi-port. Now I can specify where I want my port to be. And then it has some options for values that I can put in, such as extension, length addition, and cutback length. I'm going to go ahead and leave those values as is and confirm them. And now with my new multi-port, I actually want to assign a terminal to it as well. Now you can do multiple terminals here if you want. Um, for this instance, though, I only need the one, so I'm just going to go ahead and name it A and confirm. And then you can see your listed port along with its assigned terminal. Now, if I hop back over to my top level, you'll notice my port isn't actually showing in my top level assembly. This is because I need to create a reference set that includes that port in it. So I'm just going to go over to my reference sets and create a new one. Set it so it includes everything in the environment. Close that. If I come back and do a replace reference set, my new reference set is there along with the assigned port and terminal. Now, before we move into creating paths, I want to show you what adding standard parts to your assembly looks like inside of routing. First, I'm going to make this harness my work part. And then I'm going to move over to this place part command. Now, the place part command allows me to pull in components from various use libraries, including my custom routing electrical library. Or I can place parts according to an existing part. So I can select a part that already exists in my assembly and place that elsewhere in the same assembly. The key difference, though, between the place part command versus the add component command in your typical assembly is that the part will infer a lot of the constraints for the components based on the ports, so it snaps the, into place with less clicks than your typical assembly components. For this particular instance, I'm actually going to just be doing select existing part. So I can come in here and select the part that I'm going to be working with. And then it'll prompt me for my location. So I can select the port that I want it to be placed on. And as you can see, it constrains the component very easily with very minimal work, except it looks like it's a little out of rotation here. So I can go in and change that. That looks right. I can go and confirm it. And I've now placed a part into my harness one. Now we're going to get into creating some paths for our harness. With the spline path command, I can very easily go in and select ports that I want to create a spline through. You can watch as NX generates the spline path as I select each successive port. And just as easy as that, I have my main run for my path. If I wanted to create branches off of this, I could very easily go in and do create linear path. Select the point along my main run and select the port that I want it to go through. Now, what if I wanted to create some control points to use to create paths later? Let's go ahead and use subdivide segment to create those control points. I can specify this one at about, I want to have this at 40% arc length. 
And I want to have another one up here at 20%. Now I'm going to create some heal paths. And think of heal paths as just a same thing as a linear as a linear path, except I can set this as a spline. And I have a few different parameters that I can use to control the pathing of the spline or the linear path, depending on whether or not you have it set to generate via lines or splines. Go ahead and select my ports. And I'm going to be using an extension of one and one for all of these paths. And you can watch as I very easily just select the ports, specify my values, and I can just go from port to port, path to path, and just finish up creating all of these paths for my main harness. And another key thing with these is that they all maintain tangency. So if I have to make a design change later down the line, and one of these components is going to be moved around inside of this assembly, it'll actually maintain that pathing so that when I come back into it later, the, the harness will have adjusted for those changes. And you might notice that I actually missed two ports here. I missed this port, and I missed this port. And the I'm leaving these ports open to show the design change process later on so that when I've created my form board and everything and I brought in all my connection lists, I can show what it looks like when you've made a change in your harness and your paths and then you go back through and update your connection list, component list, and then you can go in and update your form board as well. Now, with our paths created, we can now start importing our netlist information. And this is all the connection and component information used for routing. Starting with my electrical component navigator, I'm going to be pulling in the, all the 2D information and specifying what 3D components represent those 2D connectors, adapters, and other devices used in this routing. So to pull this information in, I just need to verify my import format is correct. And I can simply come in and import this CMP file. It pulls in all the information about the connectors and their associated part names, and I can come in and auto-assign these. You'll notice a few fail, and that's due to the fact that there are duplicates within the assembly. So I can come in and manually assign those. And I can very easily go through and just make sure that these components match with the assigned connectors. And just like that, my components are all assigned, and I can hop over to my electrical connection navigator. And this is how this controls how each component is connected to the other components and is used to route the system. When doing this, the routing system automatically calculates the bundle diameter based on the number of wires passing through it and based on how the directions that they're heading, depending on which components they're pathing to. So once again, just come in, verify that this is specified to the correct import format and import this HRN file here. And it gives me a list of all my different from connections, from pins, two connections, and two pins. I can very easily come in and auto route this through my harness. You'll notice that I got two errors here for C4 and C10 for pass not found. Now, if I didn't know what these were, I could simply come in and display them, and it'll show me where these connections are missing. So I'm missing a connection from here to here, and from here to here. Now, this is, you might remember that I mentioned these before, that I left these ports open for the sake of the design change later on. Um, again, this is just to help show that you can very easily come in and show and display what you're missing when you pull in all this information. Another thing I wanted to mention is that with the electrical component navigator. There's some information listed here, but you can actually expand this by editing your display format. And I gotta set this to full so that I can get all the some additional information about the connections. So it gives me my length, my cut length, whether or not it's wired, the color of the wire, the gauge of the wire, and even the type. And then also at the end, it gives you which harness it's associated with. So if you had a bunch of harnesses listed in here, it helps separate which harness each one's associated with. Now with our harness created, we can go ahead and start generating our form board. 
Now for this instance, I'm going to go ahead and just open up my harness in a new window. And then select Create Form Board Drawing. I can then specify my sheet size, which I'll leave as E. And it gives me this 3D representation of my form board, and along with a few options to control how it's displayed. At the top, it gives me the option to choose the main run. It can be specified via the longest, thickest, or user-specified run. So by longest, I'll use the longest run in my harness as the main run for the form board, which is what I'll leave it as. And then it gives me some options for length rounding, but I'm going to go ahead and skip over those and jump down to branches. This is where you can specify how you want your branches to look by default when you first create the form board. So you can have it set as as designed, which would use your harness's actual angles to select the angles for the form board. Standard angles, maximum angles, and then random angles. For me, I'm just going to use standard. I'm going to orient some of these branches after the fact anyway, so I'll go ahead and confirm that. And then it generates my 3D representation. And now I'm going to come in and orient some of these branches. So say I, this form board was going to jump off the side of the page for me. So I need to shorten it down. So I'm going to take this branch here and set this angle to 270. I'm going to take this branch and set it to 90. And there's my new form board. And now I can just take this form board straight into drafting. and generate my form board drawing. From here, I have access to all the NX drafting tools. So I can simply go into parts list and generate a parts list for my form board. And where I can do show balloon. So I can select my view and do show balloon to automatically balloon all the components inside of this view. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is how uh, what the design change process looks like with this setup. So what would happen if I needed to go back into my harness level and add some routes and then what it would look like updating my form board from that. So if I hop back over to my assembly, I have those two ports that I need to path in. So let's go ahead and do a subdivide segment. 15 is good. And we're going to do two heel paths. Do one here, value one and one. And we're going to do one here, one and one. And that generates two paths. And I can very easily come into my connection navigator where those two paths are listed and just automatically route them. You can watch as it routes the cable. And another thing that goes along with the design change process is that if Say you make one of these cables and you don't like how it automatically routed the path, for instance, for this black cable here. If I wanted to modify this cable, I can very easily go into the cable and select a point on my curve. It'll generate a new point along this curve. And I can modify the position of that point in space to modify how the curve is shaped and its orientation. So say I wanted to move this over a bit and move this back so it goes down a little bit more before arcing forward into the other port here. So I can do that. And then also, you can actually control the length of this cable. So if I wanted to set this as a strict value, I could come in and change my slack mode to moving points, where length is controlled by moving unconstrained points. And I can specify this as a fixed length. I can then come in and specify a value of 18. And you can watch as I hit enter, it actually adjusts the cable to compensate for that fixed length. So now with my two cables completed, I can go in and update my form board. Once I get a uh, click update form board, it takes me back over to my form board file and prompts me with this new dialog where I can find discrepancies. And what this does is it lists out all the different things that have changed since the last time this form board was updated. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm it. 
And then it's going to populate with another information window, just telling you again what's changed, what's going to be changed as when this form is uh, this form board is updated. Now I just need to update my view. You'll notice I have a, a branch here that's out of position. It's lined up here. So let's go back into our electrical and compensate for that real quick. Just go back into orient branch. Select my branch, set this to zero, confirm. And then I can very easily just hop right back over to drafting and update my view once more to get the corrected form board. And that is a very simple process to update your design. And that concludes today's webinar over NX routing and harness design. Thank you for attending. We're going to be opening this up for questions. If you'd like to rewatch this video at any time, um, it'll be posted up on our YouTube channel, so feel free to go check out that this video or some of our other videos related to NX. I also have my email posted on here, so if you need to contact me outside the webinar for questions regarding this, feel free.